COVID-19 pandemic has caused unprecedented disruption to the aviation industry, and it's the airlines that have been hit hardest. That's all too evident from the flurry of negative financial news coming from carriers around the world. But some would say traffic data provides the most objective assessment of what's been happening as the virus has spread. Spire Aviation tracks aircraft using ADSB data gathered from its own constellation of 88 satellites. So AIN asked the company to generate charts showing movements at seven international airports across six continents on three separate Wednesdays in July 2019, February 2020 and July 2020. We looked at Singapore Changi Airport, Dubai International, Sydney Airport in Australia, Johannesburg in South Africa, Frankfurt in Germany, Sao Paulo in Brazil, and Chicago in the United States. Two key factors jump out from these snapshots of the COVID effect that the number of scheduled flights has declined by an average of around 70% over the periods that we were looking at, and that total aircraft numbers dipped by just over 50%. But the averages reveal significant variations in flight activity, reflecting both the shifting timeline of the virus's insidious spread and the different responses of governments in countries concerned that were trying to halt the outbreak. Looking at the data, we see scheduled traffic, for instance, at Chicago has been down by 31% at most, and aircraft numbers have dipped by no more than 24%, which is far less severe than the decline seen elsewhere. There's really two reasons if you're looking strictly at the uh, U.S., and in this case, Chicago O'Hare. One is, you know, just the strong domestic air traffic within the U.S. It's a country of, what, 350 million people. There are no country borders. There's lots of borderless air travel. Um, you know, people's way of life is based on, uh, you know, high volume, short haul travel. Uh, regional airlines like Southwest Airlines, who actually flies out of uh, Chicago Midway, mm -hmm. uh, Alaska Airlines, um, have really focused on that high volume, uh, short haul travel. So I think um, that's uh, that's part of the reason. Uh, it'd be interesting to see the Chicago Midway numbers, given that's where Good Southwest point. Airlines is based. Um, but I also think, and this is probably the more obvious point, is different uh, levels of travel restrictions uh, were implemented around the world in different places. And as we are mostly all aware, you know, the U.S. was um, not as stringent in terms of um, and the decisions that were made uh, around air travel. Spire's charts use different colors, shapes, and shading to differentiate the aircraft traffic drawn from its satellite data. For instance, darker shading represents different aircraft altitudes. The charts reveal the amount of air traffic during a 24-hour period at a specific airport. Um, the color bands represent the three different time periods that we're looking at. So July 10th, 2019, which was roughly a year ago, is represented by blue. Uh, February 2020 is represented by green. And then uh, two weeks ago, or a week ago, July 8th, is represented by, by orange, which is kind of, you know, you know post-COVID or in the COVID times that we're, we're in. Um, so you can kind of get a sense of, uh, of how much air traffic there was and, and how it's decreased. The lines um, represent the runways at the airports, uh, mm -hmm. as well as the approach patterns. So where you see those lines coming up is where you're seeing a, a tremendous amount of unique aircraft. So it's really easy to ascertain um, where those runways are. Many companies now have a need for data like this to make sense of all sorts of factors that can impact their business operations. Aviation service providers constitute a significant part of Spire's client base. Most of our ASPs are focused on flight tracking, data analytics, logistics. They develop innovative products and solutions that help drive data-driven operational efficiencies. So um, some examples, for instance, we have um, a, a couple of companies that are focused on flight tracking, um, mm. AirNav and FlightRadar24. They integrate our data uh, with their terrestrial data and build solutions that help companies track aircraft at a global level. Uh, so essentially being able to track where an aircraft is, no, ma no matter where it is uh, across the world. Um, one of our companies called MyAirOps creates software for aircraft management and aircraft operators. Um, mm -hmm. Our data essentially helps them to track aircraft and determine when, in, when an aircraft might need maintenance. Um, they mm -hmm. also use it for post-flight post planning and analysis, you know, just understanding what happened during the flight. And this data is proving to be of even greater value now in the complex environment in which aviation is having to function in the wake of the COVID-19 pandemic. 
if you think about just a, a pandemic by definition, right? Pandif- pandemics are, are, are by definition global events. Mm-hmm. Um, and global events really require global solutions. Um, and you know, in this day and age, global solutions require global data. <laughs> mm-hmm. And that's, that's exactly what Spire offers. Uh, because of, 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 our, of our constellation of satellites, we're able to collect data around the world anywhere. Um, and we can basically uh, continue running even when human infrastructure on Earth is at, is at a standstill. Mm-hmm. Um, and if you look at what our da- data can do, I mean, really, if you look at it from a monitoring perspective, from a prevention perspective, a risk mitigation perspective, our ADSB d- data in particular can play a big role. So, for instance, ADSB data um, allows us to keep tabs on how the entire world economy is reacting. During the emergency, Spire has been able to support various essential functions, such as meteorological agencies that found themselves without weather data that they've generally been able to gather from the active airline fleet worldwide. The company says its approach to this task is different. Well, we we collect um, data from multiple radio frequency sensors uh, that sit on our, our satellites, and we do that at a global scale. So as you mentioned, we have we have 88 satellites, um, and nano satellites are satellites that, that are really the size of a bottle of wine, mm-hmm. um, and they're, they're flying uh, flying around the earth. We have an iter- you know, in- iterative development strategy. So compared to contemporary operators who are out there, which launched on uh, one fixed system, so this is your traditional, we're going to launch you know, one rocket and a massive satellite that goes up there. We're constantly iterating, improving, and upgrading our hardware on orbit, which we can do because the access to launch is easier for nanosatellites. It's much easier, much cheaper to launch a bottle of wine into space, in theory, than it is to launch a multi-billion dollar you know, bus <laughs> into space. And because we can do that, um, we can apply uh, you know, the iterative process to our hardware design. We can do that to our software as well. So our systems um, is an all software defined radio, which allows us to constantly upgrade and improve our performance and add features on the systems that are already in space. We don't have to wait 10 years to launch another satellite. We can make improvements via software um, on the satellites themselves. Spire says aviation is now its biggest focus, and it has three more satellite launches planned for 2020, adding 20 new satellites to its constellation. The new generation equipment will have twice the coverage and the addition of new ground stations will mean it can get data down faster and analyze it. Thanks for watching this AIN video. Please like, subscribe, and share it if you've enjoyed it. Also, visit AINonline.com for all the latest on the aviation industry.